from Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. And welcome back here on theCUBE. Continue our coverage at AWS Summit here 2017. We're at the Javits Center. Hustle and bustle of Midtown New York. A lot of things happening here in Manhattan. One of those things happening is Stu Miniman. Stu, you're always happy. Oh, thank you, John. Are you curious about your credit score, by the way? Are, do you have any inclination or any kind of curiosity about John, that? John, I'm happy with my credit score. I don't think I need any more credit. Well, I think what we were talking just about. in <laughs> case, we have with us a CIO of FICO to join us, Klaus Molt. Klaus, good to see you. Glad Thank you could be here with us today. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, and we'll get to the credit scores later, all right? Because <laughs> exactly. we do want to touch base we on that. We will check up on it. Uh, nice job on the uh, keynote stage Thank you. this morning. Talked about a lot of things. I mean, it's about, you know, you had processing, planning, automation, managing, microservices, a lot of, you know, for our folks at home who weren't privy to the, uh, the presentation, just kind of sum it up a little bit for me, if you would, what the message you were trying to get across this morning. Yeah, very high level. We are a 61-year-old company. We built a ton of software. What we primarily have delivered on-prem. Now, it was about four years ago, that's when we started to go to our private cloud and develop our solutions on the private cloud. But it was mostly done in a lift and shift fashion. We took the solutions, implemented in our data centers, optimized it a little bit so we could do the shared services for the clouds, et cetera. But uh, as we saw our customers starting to go to the public cloud, a lot of the financial institutions, now it's more secure to run and have your data in the public cloud. We have auditor compliance associated with the public cloud. So we obviously wanted to go to the public cloud so we could meet our customers there. So that was a very, very big message today. Uh, by going to the public cloud, obviously we reap the benefits of what the public cloud has to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, we can lower our cost. We still have to rewrite a lot of our applications mm -hmm. to take full advantage mm -hmm. of the services that AWS can provide. And that means that we enable our new application to be able to scale up and scale down. We also build the images that we deploy on AWS so we can deploy them at a much more rapid pace so we can enable scale for our customers setting the solutions up in days and not week or month like we used to. So that's another huge benefit. And we talked about all the regions that AWS provides, 16 regions around the globe. Mm -hmm. We want to grow with our customer base and we don't want to build data centers around the globe. There's absolutely no need to, no value added in doing so. So we go where AWS goes, and AWS keeps expanding the regions, and we can deploy our software now at a rapid pace again in the various regions. Sure. And then finally what I said, which is very important, that's about security and compliance. Security aspects, we've gotten a significant amount of help, so we build our services in a very secure fashion, mm -hmm. but a lot of the services that now AWS provides is already pre-audited, and hence compliance such as PCI, et cetera, is inherited as part of these services. So our solution, we use the extension that, of the services that AWS provides, and that of course enables us to go through the audit process at a much more rapid pace. Mm -hmm. So as you can hear, a significant amount of benefits moving to the public cloud. Yeah. So Klaus, 61 year old company, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously lots of legacy, probably you know, yeah. lots of application. Where are you with your application portfolio? How much do you still own on-prem? Uh, versus you know public cloud and you know how, how do you, how do you make those kind of decision points? Yeah, we we obviously had a pretty significant amount of our install base still on the on the private cloud or uh, as well as on prem, right? The majority is still on prem. Having said that, more and more of our customers have asked, how can we be smarter? So we don't have to maintain all the upgrades. So we don't have to maintain all the security, etc. How can how can you enable us to move faster? So what we are seeing is that our customers is asking us to move to the cloud. And the cloud for them probably don't always mean the public cloud or the private cloud. They just want somebody else to manage their infrastructure. Uh, having said that, a lot of them, as I said, is start to experiment with the public cloud. And that means that they're learning more and more about AWS and how to operate there, and they're asking us to go there. So I would say we're still early in our journey. I would say that there is a high demand for us to deliver our services in the cloud. And delivering it the private cloud, we probably just can't accelerate and do it fast enough for the customers who wants to migrate. 
hence the reason for why we're going to an already API-enabled infrastructure to deliver these services. Yeah, obviously Amazon, ha Amazon has a lot of data services. You need to yes. worry about kind of your governance and compliance. Uh, well, I got a, got a note from uh, the community actually, wondering if you've had a chance to look at Amazon Glue. Uh, you know, things like ETL, how much of a burden is that for you? Is that, uh, that, is that offering something that's compelling? How do you, how, how do you really look at um, you know, that, that space? Yeah, so obviously as part of our services, we use ETL service. We developed our own ETL service, and we do that specifically to our products. Having said that, we look at every single service that AWS brings to the table, and we looked at Glue. Uh, Glue may not deliver what we exactly need to at this point in time, but we think as Glue evolves, uh, we likely got to use these services. We rather would not develop and maintain those services ourselves, mm -hmm. no good reason. So if all the criteria for the next generation service on AWS is met, and it's a shift, I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer for us to use those features, right? All right, how long have you been the CIO of uh, FICO? I, I joined about 18 months ago, uh, had my own company before, ran the infrastructure for Salesforce for around seven years, and then ran the infrastructure for eBay for around four years. So I, I grew up in the cloud, cloud world. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so it sets me up, you know, one of the questions we've all been looking at for yeah. like the last decade is, what does cloud mean for the role of the CIO? Yeah, well, cloud means a lot of things for me, right? It, it definitely means that I focus on e evolving the business. Focus on the business value that I can bring to the table. Not focus on really building infrastructure, which doesn't really add any value to our day-to-day. -day. Uh, it did at once, uh, at one time, where a lot of the feature set or security aspects or deployment aspects was not where they needed to be in the cloud. The services now that AWS provides uh, brings, gives us the ability to utilize those services and rewrite our stack, so I don't have to worry about our CapEx, et cetera. We shift it all to OpEx, and we scale it as we see fit, right, with our customers. Faster deployments, faster ways for innovation, uh, utilizing all the new services that's being deployed. And, and that, to me, is truly a business benefit, right? I, I don't want to run data centers. It doesn't add a significant amount of value. Yeah. Uh, I did an interview with FICO a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, and where it was early in looking at uh, container services. Yes. Bring us up to speed, where do containers fit into your environment? What, would, what do you look to Amazon uh, for that environment? You playing with serverless at all yet? Yes, you know? we, I mean, we, obviously we experiment with all of the new functionality that's being brought to the table. We have done quite a bit on the Docker front. Um, we are evaluating the Kubernetes. Uh, we're excited that that is the direction that AWS is going. <laughs> we would like to see some of the things move a little faster. That's always the case. So we yeah, well, that, that, was the, that was the news last <laughs> week. Uh, you know, I, we're, we're hoping to get Adrian on because <laughs> we're supporting exactly. CNCF, Kubernetes. How, when, you exactly, know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but of, of course we're experimenting and the moment that it's there and available for us, I'm fairly certain that we'll head down that route, right? It's a nice packaging, it's, a, it's an easy deployment, uh, a, an easy update. You also talked about serverless. Serverless is a big thing for us. Um, we mostly use it for admin functions to kick things off, to enable the auto-scaling, et cetera, et cetera. We don't really run the critical transactions as part of serverless, uh, as you can imagine, because we operate largely in regulated industries, so we have to have mm -hmm. significant logging around what we do. But for a lot of the admin functions, we actually already use serverless as part of our platform on AWS. How, how you know, you've been on the job, what, April, right? Last yes. year. Yes. You walk in at this very transformative time, yep. right, of FICO, and the role of the CIO in general is at a transformative time, too, yep. because you have a lot more options. So, scale all that in terms of speed and how quickly you have to make decisions, how your role changes now, yeah. because of the capabilities that you have at your disposal, and the options that you have to decide between. Yeah. You know, the, the interesting part of this is, um, and we talked about it with some of the other speakers uh, backstage. Uh, we've seen the movie before, right? It's uh, uh, on, on, uh, at Salesforce, right? We, we build our own infrastructure, et cetera. But we used AWS as well for a lot of our development. So it's not like it's so new anymore. AWS even is, is not a young company anymore. It actually is a proven company. You heard it, right? A million users, et cetera. So for us, it's, it's pretty easy to go with proven technology to learn from where others have been, right? We stand up the shoulders of, of giants. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of companies that already have done and moved to the cloud and run successfully in the cloud. 
I think actually the financial and insurance industry is probably some of the folks that's late to the game, if you so may, because they have not been used to running in public clouds. Mm -hmm. So that mindset is something that you have to bring to the table. And we have to ensure that we educate all of our folks that has been used to on-prem, that has been used to operating in a certain world and, and still run COBOL systems uh, on mainframes uh, of what it means to move to the clouds. And that's a big transformation to, to change that mindset mm. and operate also in an agile way, right? We have to change the way that we operate, the way that we plan, the way that we deliver. So it's all coordinated across multiple product lines, uh, planned out and delivered in an agile fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can sync our product and have the product interact with each other. And that delivery cycle and the way that we package things has to be thought of very differently. So for that we actually created a series of, of micro-learning uh, within the company where we just recorded five minutes of our CEO, five minutes of some of the engineering that did the packaging, so everybody could get up to speed at a very fast pace of what it really means, and then we do deep dive curriculums that is specific to your role within the company. Plus, what's on your list of what you're looking for from Amazon and your other uh, vendors out there to, to make your life easier? Sounded of like Glue sounded interesting, but doesn't fit exactly the way you do it. Kubernetes, you're, you're keeping an eye on. What, what, what else is out there? Yeah, obviously we want to see reference architectures. We want to see and learn from what people have done, done before. In some cases, we will be first to markets with certain things, but we're looking to get that jump started in general, right? We, we want to leapfrog the way that we deliver our stuff. We want to make sure that we can do faster, bigger, better, smarter. And that means that we have to test and validate a ton of technologies out there. Uh, if there's somebody that already has gone down the route that we really can have a pens down type of discussion with to understand what's actually going on, uh, that helps us, right? That helps us understand what, what's being done, what the capabilities are, et cetera. And that we can utilize in how we deliver our service to our customers. So when you think about it, it's less than 12 months ago that we just started the AWS journey. We now have both my FICO scores on AWS, we have marketing services, and we're just about to release a series of our solutions on AWS for the financial services. So it's, it's fast, it's going fast, and we have to understand all the new technologies. And you feel like you got whiplash going on right now <laughs> then? Because, I mean, this, you've covered a lot of ground in a very yeah. short period of time. Yeah. Well, as I said, you know, we're fortunate enough to have folks that understand clouds um, and helps, and, and this is really a big team effort, right? All the way from engineering, CEO, our CTO, uh, sales has to understand how to sell platform rather than sell solutions. So there's a lot of education that has to go on, and I think that's actually key to ensure that you bring the whole company with you. You know, it doesn't matter if you have one or two or five people that can run really fast, because they'll turn around and find out that nobody's running with them. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to make sure, right, that we bring the whole company with us Absolutely. as we implement these solutions. And explain what it is. What are the benefits? Why? How does it work? Uh, and we put a significant amount of effort into that in our company. Well, can we work on this FICO uh, credit thing uh, off camera, how yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah, good, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Klaus, thanks for being with us. We appreciate no, the time. I appreciate and, the time. Uh, again, Thank you very much. Nicely done this morning on the keynote stage. Thank you. Klaus Smolt, CIO of FICO, joining us here on theCUBE. We'll continue our coverage from the AWS Summit from New York right after this.